Hey, good morning, Wildcats. Welcome to the Mr. McGahey channel, where excitement in the area of drafting and design is a daily promise. All right, architecture students, bear with me. Uh, we've got two kids e-learning, my wife on the phone, and this is the quietest place I could get to in my house. So um, you might hear some dog barking or something else, but uh, what we're doing today is just a quick, really quick overview. And I know when I say quick, sometimes that can be like 15 minutes. I'm going to try to keep this to just a couple um, or let's say 10 at the most. But <clears throat> at any rate, this is for you, uh, architecture students. So in your next project and to not confuse architecture kids, you guys can go ahead and pick from either the inventions and prototyping project or an architecture project. Um, if you're doing an architecture project, it can be uh, a residence. Uh, so it could be a house, a cabin, a condo, uh, anything like that, an apartment. It could be uh, a commercial project, which would be something like a, uh, a coffee shop, a business, uh, it's a restaurant, etc. cetera. Um, I would limit it to those two, okay? Uh, industrial is gonna be pretty beyond what we can probably accomplish, okay? Again, uh, SketchUp, you have a link to download SketchUp, you have a link to download AutoCAD or Revit, uh, any of the Autodesk uh, programs. You could do this on any kind of freeware, a phone program, but the concept sketching you're gonna have to do on paper, okay? And the whole project you can do on paper. I really, really would recommend getting some graph paper if you can, um, even lined paper. You could say that every one line on that paper is uh, one foot, and do your do your final drawing that way, okay? For this project, you're gonna be doing uh, first the concept sketching element, which would be the balloon architecture, balloon diagramming. Second, you're going to be constructing a floor plan. Third, you're gonna be doing elevation drawings, and the final component to it is going to be uh, actually constructing a scale model, okay? So let's talk about where do we start, and you guys, again, are picking the project. But the first thing we do, in any kind of architecture is we construct a design program, right? And this is something that usually you're gonna do when you meet a client and you're gonna, the client's gonna say, well, I want this, 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 and this. Um, let's say if I'm constructing, and I always, the sample house I do every semester and you've done it before, but the thing that I always do is like, if you're constructing a simple guest house, um, what do you need, okay? So you break a design program down into things you need and things you want, all right? These are the things that the structure is gonna have to fulfill, all right? Um, these are the things that like, hey, pie in the sky, if I can make it do this, I would really, really want it to do this, okay? Those would be things like, okay, if I'm designing a guest house, I would like an open floor plan. So I'll put open floor plan. It could be something like I want um, uh, a covered um, sitting area, like or a covered outdoor space. All right, and it could be something like I want a um, walk-in closet. I don't need a walk-in closet but having one might be cool and I might want it. Okay, what are needs? Let's say this is a guest house. It's there for a friend uh, to stay at if you had a big enough property uh, or somebody else, but um, you know, in-law, grandma, grandpa, whoever. Okay, so what do you need? You need definitely a bathroom. You need definitely a bedroom. You need definitely a closet because where are they going to hang their clothes? And you need definitely, maybe you don't need a full kitchen, but maybe you could say uh, a kitchen, kitchenette, okay? Somewhere to prepare food. And you're going to want to be able to either uh, uh, want to read a book uh, or look on your phone or your iPad and sit down or watch a television program or something else, okay? So these are the things that I absolutely need, all right? Now, where to start? Remember, when we start, right, square buildings create square thoughts. And so if we think about that, um, we're going to be very limited, all right? And the other thing we want to do is look at these things. If you can read my writing, say no to hallways. You don't have enough space, all right? You guys are going to tell me the square footage on this project. So let's say if you guys just say I'm going to have a thousand square feet or whatever 
500. You're gonna tell me it's based on the size of the building, okay? Where do we start? I'm thinking about this as a guest house, okay? First thing you wanna consider is where does the house sit, all right? So let's say the view on this house is in this direction, okay? Now, why do you consider the view? Because <clears throat> remember, architecture is a relationship between public and private spaces, as well as how that relates to the environment, all right? So <clears throat> what's a public space? A living room, a kitchen, uh, a dining room, something like that. Uh, a, a porch, what's a private space? Uh, a bedroom, a bathroom, okay? Um, a balcony could be a private space, uh, even though it's outside, uh, maybe it's reserved for like a master bedroom, okay? First thing you wanna think about, if this is the view, where do I put um, my public and my private spaces? I don't know that I would put a bathroom occupying this area right here, okay? And <clears throat> um, why? Because why would I waste that, okay? So I always think about where am I entering the, the structure? So let's say, you know, you could think about this as your overall structure. Now I could say, all right, I could stick with a pretty traditional thing and put a center entrance, but in a really small structure, a center entrance is gonna divide a space. So maybe I say, okay, I'm gonna put an entryway here, okay? This, guys, this can be chicken scratch, okay? These take a few minutes to develop, okay? Now when I enter, where do I wanna go into? Well, I don't wanna go into a bedroom. I don't wanna go into a bathroom, so those are out, okay? <clears throat> Next thing to think about is, you know, constantly look over at this list of wants. Um, I really want a covered outdoor space. Where do I want that con to connect to? Mm, maybe a kitchen, maybe a sitting area, okay? So maybe locating my kitchen and sitting area uh, together might be a good thing. So what if I take this and I say, this is my um, kitchen and this is my uh, sitting area and this is my bathroom and this is my bedroom. Okay. I don't care about straight lines and straight walls yet, okay? So where is my uh, logical uh, outdoor area? And what I kind of do is I just kind of mark that out like this, okay? So I've got connectivity between my sitting area and my bedroom where I could possibly have a door that exits the building, okay? Um, my bathroom isn't, you know, blocking any kind of view or anything like that, and my kitchen is right here. Um, I enter and I go, you want, now you wanna think about logic, okay? You wanna think about, well, if I'm carrying groceries in, do I wanna go from an entrance all the way to the other side of a house? It's a longer path, right? So this is kinda uh, helpful, okay? Um, however, you know, maybe my bathroom is right next to my kitchen and I'm not really interested in that. Maybe, you know, and this is where you take this and you do a pro-con list or you do a, like a change. I need to change um, the sitting area and the um, uh, kitchen, right? Sitting uh, slash kitchen, all right? And maybe I wanna pull my bathroom forward. Okay, you can do this like a pro con list or anything else. What I do then is I slide over. Okay, don't make this thing so tiny. Don't use this much of a piece of paper. That's really good for thumbnailing when you wanna go ahead and you wanna draw like a structure um, to see kind of like what it looks like from the outside, uh, especially if you wanna do that, like let's say in perspective, right? And you wanna get um, kind of the idea and the concept of what a structure might look like and like where you might put a door. That to me is the where is where you you know go small to, to begin with. Okay, so I'm going to take this design, what I started with before. I'm going to go ahead and do another balloon, and I'm going to go ahead and double check that I've written down all the important things. Here's the view. Okay, my writing is killing me because I'm trying to do these so fast. But uh, anyways, I like the placement of the entrance. <clears throat> that works. Okay, and I said right here, now I go back. What did I wanna change? I wanted to change the relationship between the kitchen and the sitting area, okay? But I like the location of the kitchen, okay? 
I'm thinking I want to get the bathroom away from the kitchen. So what I think I'm going to do is I'm going to use this area for the bathroom. Okay. Put an H on there. Okay. And what I said, I'm going back to this. I said, I want to move my sitting area over here. And now my bedroom is right here. So we just made a couple of flips. Okay. Now, I'm looking at this, the second thing that ballooning helps you with is scale. So it's placement and proportion, really. You can think about those two things. So how much do I have in my entry? In a small space like this, I'm not gonna have a foyer, okay? Um, my bathroom right now is approximately the same size as my bedroom, all right? So I wanna go ahead and I'm keeping this fast, but if I'm you, I'm gonna go ahead and do an additional balloon diagram. I'm gonna take this and maybe I'll just, actually I'm just gonna flip this over and I will do one more for you. So I like the positions and the placement of the rooms, but I wanna remember that an entryway in here could be just a small space, right? It could have a closet or something else, okay? My kitchenette, you know, I have such a small thing here, this little guest house, so this doesn't need to be too big. I'm not gonna have like a double oven and all those things, okay? Um, my bathroom, you know, has to be decently sized because you need to have a shower, a toilet, um, a sink, those types of things, and maybe even like a small linen closet or something, okay? Bedroom, I wanna make sure that people are comfortable while they're staying here, so maybe I'll go ahead and make my bedroom uh, reasonably sized, and then my sitting area. Um, doesn't have to be huge. You're not having a party, maybe a, a love seat and an armchair or something else, okay? Now, what did this do? This switched from the original design, which was here, by making these couple of changes, it's switching my outdoor sitting area. So now this place right here, I'm gonna block off for my outdoor sitting area, okay? The last piece of this with your concept sketching, you know, look at it once you're happy with the placement of everything. Once you say, okay, I like the kind of overall placement, scale, everything else. Now you connect these loosely um, knit <coughs> bubbles into an actual building. What I like to do is I like to kind of go around and we call this part the overlay. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go around and you know what I'm gonna do? Actually, I'm gonna hit pause for a minute. I'm gonna come back with a different color because that's a really handy thing to do is come back with like a different color uh, pencil or pen and that really helps out uh, making stuff clear. Okay guys, back again. Um, <clears throat> couple of things, you're spending more time on this, okay? I can do this pretty fast, I've done it a million times. I want you to spend more time. This whole process should take you, you know, 45 minutes. It should take you an hour to get to something that you really like because the more time you spend here, the less time you spend on the details, okay? Um, this is driving me nuts because I'm trying to do it quick for a video and I'm using pens, which I hate using pens and I'm using, I'm drawing, um, you know, pretty, like I hate my, my messy text and everything else. Don't take this too literally, but what I do is I kind of go around the building and um, I kind of go ahead and use these spaces, uh, kind of the ins and outs of the bubbles to see what kind of opportunities it presents, okay? I had a student one time that took this very, very literally and they took the bubbles and there was a bubble here and a bubble here and a bubble here and a bubble here inside, and a, you know, one here. And they went around and they were like going this way, in, out, in, out, in, out in, out, like this. Once you start doing that, you get a structure that's a nightmare to build, okay? When I was in construction, and I've said this before in class, when I used to uh, build houses, every time you turned a corner, we used to be able to say that that corner was worth about $650, and that was like in the mid-2000s, all right? Uh, why? Because you have, uh, if, there, if it's a brick home, it takes longer to make stagger bricks in a corner. Um, it takes longer for drywall guys to go ahead and finish a corner, for painters to paint into a corner, for trim guys to cut baseboards and crown molding into a corner. So the corners really add a lot to houses, but that's boring, all right? So when we do this overlay, um, you know, look and see what opportunities are presented kind of by your bubbles, all right? So I kind of do this, all right? And I look and I say, oh, that's kind of nice because this little indent created this opportunity for me to use this as that covered seating area that I really wanted, right? 
Okay, so that actually simplifies the back of my house and the roof line, um, but it presents a nice opportunity, even to something where I could have access from two areas. So maybe what I can do is I can put like a set of French doors from the sitting area to out here. Maybe what I can do in this area is put like a single door. And remember, you wanna think about ways that doors swing, right? I want this door to swing towards the wall, okay? So I don't eat up space here, okay? Sitting area is right here, bedroom's right here. The bedroom is a, what kind of space? It's a uh, public space, or a private space, rather. So I first, I just square everything off, okay? Bathroom is a private space, okay? Um, and I already see one thing that is um, creating sort of a design challenge for me, and it's from my entrance, I can't walk into a bathroom which means that the only real option I have in this design is to go ahead and make my entry coming in from the side, not directly from the front. I'm, I might be fine with that, but I might wanna go back and change something else, okay? Um, you wanna think about your bathroom layout, right? What's a good sensible way, like maybe my tub's here, maybe my toilet is here, maybe my sink is here, right? Now I have a huge amount of space in a, in a small uh, building, so maybe I can uh, condense that space. Maybe I can come in right here and put a bifold door closet for the bedroom. I've minimized some space that I, I didn't need in the bathroom. I've created something else. Where's your bed gonna go? Uh, maybe I put my bed right here, and a pillow and a pillow, and now you start thinking about windows. Okay, kitchen layout. What could happen with my kitchen? Okay, maybe my kitchen is just kind of like an L shape, um, and I have a sink, which is right here, right? Very, very, very simple sketch, okay? And so this right here, I wanna see a really, really nice professional sketch. Guys, you don't always do it in three. Sometimes it's four, sometimes it's five. So challenge yourself with this project, um, with this, at least this area of this project, to, um, to push yourself, to get to the point where you could take this and you could take some dimensions and say, okay, and, and, and just add those dimensions onto it, all right? Um, I haven't put any windows in this building yet. That's something I'm going to have to do. Maybe I want my windows in the sitting area right here. So challenge yourself, all right? And just like in English or history or anything else, when you write a paper, I know that, and especially when I was a student, we all, you know, I wanted to make, write that first paper, make it great and say it's perfect, it's as good as it needs to be, I don't need to make it better. But I can see in the 12 minutes or 14 minutes I've spent on this video, I was able to make quite a few things better and come away with something that actually serves my needs. And the last step is go back to this and ask yourself, did it do those things that I wanted it to do, but particularly what I needed it to do, okay? If you have any questions, get with me on Zoom this week. And good luck with the project. Have fun with it.